beloved, I want to uh, share Philippians chapter 4, uh, verse 8 with you. It says, finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are noble, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of a good report, if there be any virtue, if there be any praiseworthiness, meditate on these things. And, and so in other words, it's simply put, you say, finally, brethren, think on things that are noble. If it's not noble, cast it down. You say, think on whatever things are just. If it's not just, uh, lining up with the will of God and the purpose of God, cast it down. Whatsoever things are pure. He say, think on these things. If it's not a pure thought, send it back to the sender. God wants us to think on noble things, just things. Things are pure. Things that are lovely. Yes. If it's not lovely, cast it down. If it's not of a good report, Cast it down. Cast down all those mind-binding powers that the enemy will try to bring your way. And another thing, uh, another way in which you can get the mind of Christ, that's studying his word. Uh-huh. You got to study the word of God. Meditate. The Bible says in Joshua chapter 1 and verse 8, he says, meditate on the word of God day and night. Meditate on the word of God day and night that it may bring you good success. And if you're not meditating on the word of God and you're meditating on junk, then that's what your life is going to be. And if you're just meditating on problems, then that's what your life is going to be. I know that we're going to have some trials and we're going to uh, have some tribulations in this world. But if we would get the mind of Christ, whatever the Lord allow you to come to, God is well able to bring you through it. You must study God's word. You must believe in his word. When you get it down in your DNA, no matter what you are facing, you're able to overcome when you have the mind of Christ. And this is why uh, the writer tells us in the book of Ephesians chapter 6, he says, put on the whole armor of God. But right now I want to dwell on the helmet of salvation, because we know that the helmet protects the head and what's on the inside. It's your mind. So the helmet of salvation, it protects your mind. And as a child of God, it is imperative that we protect our mind and we shun our mind from the lies of the enemy. In order to receive the blessings of God, we got to meditate on those things that are noble, those things that are pure, those things that are just, those things that are, are lovely, those things that are of a good report. We got to think on those things. And I know that the enemy come to steal, kill, and destroy. He come to oppress you. He come to depress you. But again, you have to guard your mind. You have to guard what you meditate on, what you allow to uh, get in your your uh, your mental capacity, because a lot of erroneous well, not a lot erroneous thinking uh, and thoughts are lodged into your mind. And if you don't cast those things down, and if you don't cast those imaginations down, you will become and be and go through whatever. It is that the enemy has lodged your way. You have to tell yourself what God has said about you. God has said that you are wonderfully and you are fearfully made. You are made in his image and you are made in his likeness. You got to tell depression, you don't live here. You must tell oppression, you don't live here. You got to tell stress, you don't live here. God did not create us. Hallelujah to live all bound up. 
Uh-uh. It's too many of God's people that are stressed out, that are uh, oppressed, that are depressed. And I do realize that mental illness is real. Yes, schizophrenia, bipolar, uh, seasonal depressions, all of that stuff is real. But I do believe in the healing virtue of Jesus Christ. Jesus said, the word of God says that Jesus was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. Hallelujah. And the chastisement of our peace was upon him. And by Jesus stripes, we are already healed. Even for those that are going through emotional events abuse, uh, mental illness, depression, uh, whatever it is. Hallelujah. We just want to put down the thoughts of the enemy. So what is your thought pattern like? That's a question that you can ask yourself. What is your thought pattern like? Are you thinking on things that are good, that are lovely, things that's going to benefit you, uh, positive things? Or are you meditating on problems and negative things? So you become what you focus on. So are you focusing on what God say that you can do, be, and have? Are you really focusing on those things? Or are you focusing on the lie of the enemy? God does, does not want us focusing on the lie of the enemy. Not at all. God wants us to focus on his word because he is not a man that he should lie. He's not the son of man that he should repent. Whatever God has promised you, it shall come to pass. Whatever the word of the Lord is over your life, it shall come to pass. The enemy come to weary you. He come to buffet you. But you got to... Uh, Keep the mind of Christ. And I know that insanity is real. Insanity is real. But God wants us to be sane. How can we remain sane in a chaotic world? Well, we can remain sane in a chaotic world by meditating on the word of God, by believing and trusting God, no matter what situation you are in. And yes, I have been through uh, some rough patches in my life. And can I tell you, everything is not uh, hunky-dory as I speak. But I try not to uh, become stressed out because of what I may be facing. Here's the thing. I put everything that I'm facing and that I go through, I put it before the Lord. I meditate on his word. Hallelujah. And I know that the Bible tells us in the book of Revelations, I believe it's chapter 11. He says that we overcome through the blood of Jesus and the words of our testimony. And we love not our life unto death. Okay, listen, he say through the blood of Jesus and the words of our testimony. So what are you testifying about today? Are you testifying about your sickness? Are you testifying about your, your tiredness? You're being stressed out. Your relationship is not working. Your kids out of order. Your dog leg broke. All those things may be real, but that's not what you ought to be focusing on or testifying about because the more you feed into that, the more it becomes your reality. And so, in essence, what we have to do is say, so let me see what God is saying about what I am facing. Let me see what the word is saying. Let me see what God has promised me. For the Bible tells us that all of the promises of, of God, they are yea and amen. Again, he said that you are wonderfully and you are fearfully made. Hallelujah. If you're worried about uh, a loved one that needs to be saved, he say when one in the household is saved, he say all will get saved. And so that's God promise to you. And if you're worried because your money is short, your money is acting funny, what does God worry has to say about it. In the book of Matthew, he said, I will give you 
every day your daily bread. He say, take no thought for tomorrow, for tomorrow take care of itself. And so when we try to jump the gun and worry about tomorrow, what we're going to eat, what we're going to drink, what we're going to wear, he said, just causes more gray hair to come in our head. And he says that we will not grow any taller from thinking about those things. That's right. He will supply all of our needs according to his riches and glory through Christ Jesus. And I just really sense in my spirit, uh, a lot of people are having meltdowns because of the lie of the enemy. And even though I'm not feeling too well at this time in my throat, I just came from a preaching engagement and, uh, it was a powerful thing in the lives of people were transformed in those couple of days. And, but yet I'm back on my home turf and voice is kind of challenged, but I just feel by the, the spirit and the leaning of God, even though my voice is not completely there just to get on here and just to encourage somebody. Hallelujah. That's that sickness. That uh, depression, that stress, uh, that uh, spirit of insanity that's trying to take you down, it will not work. Thank you for agreeing with me. I appreciate it. Hallelujah. It will not work. I'm, I'm just uh, looking. That's right. That stress. You are a overcomer. You are going to overcome the lie of the enemy because Jesus has already paid the price for us. Those of us that name his name and claim him as Lord and Savior. Too many people are dealing with uh, things in their family. Too many issues, issues that have been uh, swept under the rug and just really not dealing with it. And too many people have been holding things in their heart for years and years. And, and now they are walking around uh, like the young people say, cray cray, like they're crazy. Come on, somebody. But I want to tell you today that there is healing and there is deliverance for the children of God. Deliverance is the children bread. And see, when we don't take these things to God, we allow the enemy to play with our mind. Sometimes we keep this stuff in. You can't keep it in. You have to. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. We will pray. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. And that's another thing, overcoming loneliness. And so sometimes people, uh, the devil may tell you, oh, nobody, you are not friendly. You can't keep friends. You don't have a husband. Uh, you've been single for a long time. You don't have a wife or that person has left you and tried to make you feel lonely. But I want to let you know that you are never a alone because Jesus says that he will never leave us and he will never forsake us even unto the end and the devil will try to uh I know someone right now that uh always said I'm in a shut-in I'm in a shut-in every day of the week months in on in months in on in I'm in a shut-in I'm in a shut-in and it really was a yes Yes, it really was a lie of the enemy to have them shut up by themselves. And so that way, the enemy came in to that person's mind and that heart. And now that person really don't know who they are right now. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. For the Bible say, don't forsake the assemblance of the saints. And yes, a lot of people have been betrayed by their family members. And, and then the enemy will uh, make you feel like you are not love. Uh, you know, I'm going to just leave. I'm not going to deal with my brother no more. I'm not going to deal with my sister no more. I'm not going to deal with my mom or my dad. And, and he will try to, uh, like I say, make you feel 
insane, make you feel like you're not loved, you're not wanted. But I come to tell you tonight that you are loved. You are the apple of God's eye. You are wonderfully and fearfully made. And the enemy will come and just try to sow discord among the brethren. And so we're going to pray.